Now let's look at verse 11. And the beast that was and is not. Okay, remember that term, that phrase that I explained to you last Revelation study as well as in Revelation chapter 11? That was referring to the beast at the past, present, and future. Yeah. Meaning he previously reigned, but then he died, is not, see? And then future shall be, he resurrects. So it's death, burial, resurrection, right? So this is referring to the Antichrist here, the beast. Now, remember, the beast is supposed to be referring to Satan, right? But all of a sudden, at verse 11, it says it's the Antichrist. What's the explanation again? The Antichrist is Satan incarnate. That was explained at our Revelation study. So that's why it will switch back and forth with Satan and Antichrist. Satan and Antichrist. All right, so verse 11, again, the beast that was, so he previously reigned, he died, and it uh, is not, see, he's not existent, he's dead. Even he is the what? Eighth. Okay, we got a problem here. I thought this was seven. But now we got an eighth one coming out of nowhere. So here comes the eighth guy. So what is going on over here? What is going on over here is that I mentioned this one in my previous study on seven-headed dragon, ten-horned antichrist. The answer is this. Look at this. Verse 11, Pat, remember, the beast that was is not, and then I guess the next phrase is uh, shall be, right? Shall. So past, present, future, right? Okay, look at this. Verse 11, the beast that was past is not present. Future, even he is the eighth. See that? Future. Why? Because, remember, this first antichrist is on the first half here. All right, so let me draw this out so y'all can get it. All right, let's um, try to make the picture a little bit more clear so that there can be less confusion. Hope you're following so far, that way you can get this. This is the idea that's going on over here. So then the anti, look at the heads here, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? Okay, look at the heads here. The Antichrist coming at the future tribulation, right? Uh, was, is not. That's his first half here. Is the first half Antichrist different from the second half Antichrist when he resurrects? Absolutely. You might say, why? What's the difference? Because over here, he's coming down as the Antichrist, but over here he comes in with the spirit of Judas Iscariot. So out of the bottomless pit. See, Judas Iscariot doesn't come in at the first half. He comes in at the second half. So the Antichrist, he comes in as a different man. Look at John 17 and 2 Thessalonians 2. And then we're going to look at Acts. Oh. No, I'm not going to do that because I want to jump to the other good stuff, right? Otherwise, we're going to waste time. So let's just go to John 17 quickly. And then we're going to look at 2 Thessalonians 2. But you can uh, write this down too. You can write down Acts 1 to double check. But Acts chapter 1, you know where Judas went? He went to his own place. He went to the bottom. He went to the pit. Remember, the Antichrist, when he dies, where does he go? Goes to the pit. So he's meeting Judas Iscariot down there, and then Judas Iscariot resurrects. All right, let's look at 2 Thessalonians 2. So we're going to look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 first, and then we'll go to John 17. So 2 Thessalonians 2. Did I say those two passages or one? Okay, Okay. all right, so let's look at verse 4 then. I'm just going to jump then, okay? Look at verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, which everyone knows is referring to the Antichrist, but he's what? The what? Son of perdition. Okay, 
Everybody who studies eschatology, end times revelation, agrees and knows this is the Antichrist at verse 3 and 4. Now, what is Judas Iscariot called at John 17, verse 12? John 17, verse 12. Now, what did Jesus say about his 12 disciples? Pay attention. Jesus is talking about his 12 disciples here. And he says, every one of them is mine except one guy. Now, we know who that one guy is, right? Judas Iscariot. But Jesus doesn't say Judas. Jesus calls him son of perdition. John 17, 12. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost. The disciples, but, except, except which disciple? But the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. That's why he comes out as eighth as well. He also comes out as eighth. That's the idea. So this is how I would teach it concerning about uh, the seven to eight heads. Now, let's go back to Revelation chapter 17. What really shows how this number seven, okay, so I, I hope that you guys didn't get lost with the numbers. We know that this is number seven, right? And this is number eight, right? Okay, look at this. Notice the next part of the verse, at verse 11. He is the eighth, right? The eighth and is of the what? Seven. Now, notice it specifically mentioned seven here. So that's the reason why this can work. This makes a lot more sense over here. So that is how I would explain it concerning about uh, the seven to the eight heads. Now look at this, the latter part of verse 11, and goeth into where? Perdition. perdition. See, look, this guy who's of the seven went to perdition. J who's down there? Who's called son of perdition? Judas Iscariot. So notice over here that we already see the assimilation with number eight over here. It is all assimilated with number eight, the Antichrist. So let me bridge the gap over here together in, and make a chart. It, it is literally like this. That's the idea from the bottomless pit. So from the bottomless pit, the eighth head comes on out. Do, 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 like that. All right. Now, I'm going to give you something interesting on Dr. Ruckman's viewpoint. So we're going to look at the book of Daniel chapter 11. Daniel chapter 11. Now, notice that if you read the passage, let's go to Daniel chapter 11. Now, when you go back to the passage over here, notice that at verse... Uh, Revelation, I'm going to read it, you don't have to turn back there, but Revelation 17, verse 11, which we read, even he is the eighth and is of the seventh. Now notice the careful wording of that. It doesn't say he is of the seventh. I took that phrase of the seven because seven is concentrated. That's why this eighth can be assimilated with this one. But there's a possibility here. The possibility is that he doesn't have to be necessarily number seven. He's of any of the seven here. So he is of the seven, any of the seven here. So what Dr. Ruckman teaches is this. He teaches that this eighth head that's going to be from the seven here, he chooses, could some of you probably guessed, I kind of gave a clue last time in the tease, it's Alexander. So he teaches that this is going to be Alexander the Great. So that's his viewpoint over here. Now, in Revelation, what I'm trying to do is show you all different Bible-believing perspectives because eschatology is a doctrine of deep doctrine. It is a deep doctrine. So I'm going to give a full viewpoint, not pick and choose which one I like. So I try to give as best as I can. And you'll notice that I would constantly say this would be how, how I would teach it. This is my viewpoint. This is how I look at it or my theory, etc. So you'll notice I'll mention that as a disclaimer. All right, now, this is actually true. You'll notice that the king of Grecia, Alexander the Great, rises up again in the tribulation. Go to Daniel chapter 8, excuse me, Daniel chapter 8. 
Daniel chapter 8. Now look at verse 20. Daniel chapter 8, verse 20. Now look what the Word of God says about Alexander the Great. So he rules at his time, past in Greece, but he's going to come up again in the future tribulation. Look at this. Daniel 8, 20. The ram which thou sawest having two horns are the kings of Media and Persia. And the rough goat is the king of Grecia. And the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. Now that being broken, whereas four stood up for it. Okay, so let's stop one by one. So notice we know that Media and Persia, right? They were conquered. We already know that from Greece. The one who was predominant in the conquest was Alexander the Great. We know that. That's why he's referred to as that one horn. That one horn who just knocked off all the empires. Another interesting thing is that we know that after Alexander the Great's passing, that there were four generals that were fighting for position and for power. That's why this verse says at verse 22, now that being broken, see, the first king, Alexander, his kingdom broken up, whereas stu four stood up for it. Those are the four empires, the four generals. Four kingdoms shall stand up out of the nation, but not in his power. That's right, those four generals uh, is not the same like Alexander the Great's power. But verse 23, and in the what? Latter time of their what? Wow, look at that. See, future. Latter time, latter days, last days. This is the last time. All of that is tribulation wording there. So what's going to happen at the tribulation? Of their kingdom, see? Of the Grecian Empire, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king, some other king is going to come. A fierce countenance. Now, let's see if this sounds like the Antichrist, all right? A king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. And in his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully. Now, this, and shall prosper and practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people, Jews. Doesn't this sound like the Antichrist through our previous Revelation studies? Yeah, that sounds like the Antichrist. He's turning against the Jews. The signs and wonders work wonderfully, etc. Verse 25, and through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. Well, that sounds like the Antichrist. He comes in with peace, but he destroys many, and he's magnified, he's worshipped. He shall also stand up against the who? God, prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. But God's going to defeat him. See, that's carrying on that Grecian empire. So hence, there's a saying that Alexander the Great will return. Now, this brings up a bigger problem now. The bigger problem is, <clears throat> wait a minute, who is the Antichrist then? You got so many people fitting here. And then you got a lot of silly things online that... This guy's the Antichrist. That guy's the Antichrist. This guy's the Antichrist. That guy's the Antichrist. You get people saying Alexander. You get people saying the Pope. You get people saying Obama. You got, got people saying, no, it's none of those things. It's Judas Iscariot. Then you, guys, then you got people saying Nimrod will return and et cetera, et cetera. What in the world? What's the explanation here? This is not difficult to understand. You might say, no, it is difficult to understand. Well, let me explain to you. <clears throat> It is the spirit of Judas Iscariot, right? It is the spirit of Alexander the Great. Now, let's add this together. Can many different demonic spirits fit in one body? Isn't that an easy, easy question that just provided an easy answer? A lot of times people come up with complicated answers because they come up with a complicated question to begin with. But if you ask the right question, then you'll get it. That's why it's possible. That's why it's very interesting. This is what I can allow too. What I can allow, now I don't teach this 100%, but I can allow this too. What can bridge <coughs> mine point of view and Ruckman's and everybody out there who says Nimrod will return is simple. All seven heads are part of Satan incarnate. So it is possible that all of these spirits can combine into one within this Antichrist. Now that is a fierce being that you don't want to mess with then. 
See? You only need the power of the Lord Jesus Christ to conquer this being. That's how powerful this being is going to be. So that is a possible uh, teaching, which makes a lot of logical sense. 